What's up everybody, we are back with another $2 deck tech for 2DH, format we created to have a new meta for Commander and make the game more accessible to new players and players on a budget. This is my Selvala Blink Chantress deck. The main inspiration for this deck was this card Skybind here. It uh, allows you to blink a non-enchantment permanent and then return it to the battlefield on your end step whenever an enchantment enters play. Uh, I love me some enchantments and there's plenty of blink creatures in green-white. Uh, the other inspirations were Felidar Sovereign, I thought would be a really funny win con, um, and I've got a bunch more bad combos in this deck here. Uh, I've got the Sigil and a bunch of great defensive cards. Uh, and ways to protect myself. I've also got a pile of ETB creatures and the ramp that you can accomplish with Selvala with this parlay to give yourself mana is just insane. So we've got a nice pile of ramp and card draw. Some synergies with Selvala I'll show you here. Uh, Skybind is kind of another Conjurer's Closet in this deck and having this redundancy just seemed like a um, really fun way to grind value out which is what Green White is all about. You've also got cards like Cloud Shift, Flicker Wisp, and Glimmer Point Stag to assist with that theme, uh, and Cloud Shift is a great little protection spell as well. Um, Silvala can give your opponents lots of cards, but it's going to allow you to play your cards faster than your opponents, and if you play a bunch of ramp spells, then you are going to really outpace people, uh, even though you are giving them cards. Seeker of Skybreak is one of those um, little engines that can untap Selvala to give you a second activation and Instill Energy also does that. Nice that it's an enchantment to give you two activations which means you're gonna get up to eight free mana just from your one creature. Now part of the goal of this deck was to pull off this Illusionist Bracers Seeker of Skybreak combo. Now Bracers just on Selvala is nice because it, it doubles her effect as well just like these cards do but if you put the Bracers on the Seeker you can actually untap Seeker and Selvala and do that an infinite number of times, which will allow you then to have you and your opponents draw your decks, and I have uh, any number of ways that I can win the game from that point in time, uh, even through Counterspell. So uh, some fun shenanigans happening here. Uh, here we've just got the basic uh, ramp package that you're all used to seeing in a green deck. Uh, Blighted Woodland's a new one, just a little icing on the cake there to have the land uh, be a ramp spell. Uh, of course we're gonna have the ETB creatures here so that we can blink them later. Uh, vegetation Sky Shroud Claim. Now two new cards uh, to show you. Nissa's Renewal is a really powerful uh, ramp spell because it gives you the seven life which is going to let you sort of survive taking that turn off to ramp. Um, the life gain is good in Selvala when I'm doing things like Felidar Sovereign and when I'm doing things like giving uh, the aggro player lots of cards and ways to kill me. Uh, and uh, it's also um, really easy to do early in the game. I mean, I'm like, on turn four, I tap Selvala and make a couple mana, tap my four lands, and boom, I Nissa's Renewal. So, uh, really uh, good to have access to these big six mana ramp spells early in the game. Verdant Confluence is a house. This card just went under two bucks, and you can use it in the late game to return permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. So, I mean, you choose what you want to do and when it's more important, uh, depending on where you're at in the game. Uh, but early on, it's fine just to get three basic lands into play and have another Nissa's Renewal type of effect. So, a lot of uh, very fast ramp in the deck. It's going to let me do some card draw after that. So, Cream of the Crop, great for a uh, blink deck because you're going to continually trigger that every time a creature enters play. An Evolutionary Leap is just a value engine. Uh, as soon as I hit something like a Hornet Queen and have a bunch of extra tokens, or if I've got a couple of the, the elves out that have one toughness that are sort of irrelevant, you know, you just leap them away. Um, and this card's also really good against board wipes. So your opponent thinks that they're going to hit you with a five for one, and you sack three of your guys and go get three new cards. Um, and those cards are creature cards. So in this deck, those cards are going to be doing things. And this is an enchantment. It's on curve. I can't say enough good things about this card. Skull Clamp is just another little uh, value machine card draw engine. Well of Lost Dreams is one of those... Uh, you know, sort of made for this general kind of cards because when you parlay you gain life and you can immediately just spend the mana that you got uh, when you trigger this to draw more cards. So if you're just digging or you're at that point in the game where you just would rather have um, cards than mana, then Well of Lost Dreams is the card for you. 
here we've got a nice little pile of uh, value. We've got your Eidolon of Blossoms, which is great because it's an enchantment creature. Rex Sage, you know, you can never have enough Rex Sage activations. Acidic Slime, same concept. Uh, this card just came under two, and this card is awesome. So it's two E Witnesses stapled together, but the second one is optional. So instead of um, having to exile this card, which is Wizard's sort of new fixed way of stopping infinite combos, um, you can optionally let this go to the graveyard so that you can recur it again later to get something else back. Um, anytime you can get two cards for one in green, you're doing it right. Um, and having it on a 5-4 body is nice too. Palaka Worm gains you 7 life when it comes into play. I mean, this is a card that I cut from almost every other deck, but it's perfect for this deck because you can get it out so early, bump your life total, um, sort of deflect the aggro player's attention to somebody else, and if somebody does wrath the board, you're drawing a card off of it. It's also a really great blink target because you're, you're getting that 7 life every time. Hornet Queen, one of the best defensive cards in the game. This just totally discourages people from coming your way, and it's got great synergy with everything else in the deck. Resolute Archangel, because it's my favorite card, and I'm really greedy, and I don't want to die. Uh, it's also really funny when you blink it. Terastodon, uh, pretty obvious for this deck. You know, get rid of any uh, enchantments or uh, artifacts that might be slowing me down. And Fierce Empath is just perfect for this deck. It can go get any number of things, like your Hornet Queens or your... Um, Resolute Archangels, just kind of depends on where you're at in the game, what you get. Um, you can optionally go get Woodland Bellower, or you can get wood, have Woodland Bellower go get it to go get something else. Um, there's sort of a really funny um, bad chain of tutoring that I can do in this deck, where I can Bellower into Empath, into Brutalizer Exarch to go get something else. Um, <laughs> and all these guys are great when you blink them, uh, because you get that effect uh, over and over again, so you can use your Bellower to go get a Rex Age, and then you can go get a Wood Elf, and then you can go get an Empath, or you know, kind of wherever you're at in the game. And also, I mean, I'm making some big creatures. I can just swing and, and hit people with these things. Brutalizer Exarch uh, normally isn't that great for creature tutoring, but you can do this uh, in between parlays so that you put the creature on top and then you parlay, and you immediately not only draw that card, but you're guaranteed to get one mana and one life from revealing it. So this card is just really good in this deck, uh, and in a pinch you can you know, use this other effect to get rid of a non-creature permanent uh, that's holding you back or threatening you. Um, some more toolboxy stuff here. We got Heliod's Pilgrim, Totem Guide, Heart Beast. These can go get some of the auras that you'll see in my, uh, my Wincon package later, or you can just get removal if you need it. Uh, and Tajnar Swordsmith can go get Illusionist Bracers, or it can go get um, some other equipment like Skull Clamp or Swift Foot Boots. So, uh, and again, a re repeatable ETB effect that you can do. You just got to pay a little mana for it, which usually we've got extra. And while we're tutoring, we might as well plea for guidance. Go get two enchantment cards. You know, oftentimes I'm getting a Sigil of the Empty Throne, or you can get a removal spell, or you can get a combo piece. A lot of different things you can do. Um, Scout's Warning is a great uh, addition to this deck because you can do these things at instant speed. So your opponent thinks they've got you dead, you scout's warning, you flash into Resolute Archangel or whatever um, to block or destroy their thing or you know whatever's going on. This card is really fantastic and you can also sneak stuff in with a Moss War Bridge. Uh, one of my bucket list things in this deck is to Moss War Bridge a Felidar Sovereign uh, on the end step and then win on the upkeep. I haven't pulled that one off yet but um, I like to create these really stupid uh, sort of Johnny decks and then find ways to tune them and make the sub-themes work together, which I think I've done a, a decent job of in this deck. I've been able to win some games with it so far. Sigil, uh, just a house. I mean, it's pretty obvious. It's great on defense. Uh, it can be pretty good on offense as well. Uh, Mystic Barrier is one of those really cute cards that uh, I love to sneak into decks like this where I can get away with it when I've got the enchantment theme going already. Um, what you do with this card is whoever is really threatening, you make it so that they are attacking like the control player instead of you, and then you make the guy who's not threatening be the one that can attack you. And it doesn't really matter who you're attacking in this deck because you're not really attacking that often as your win condition. And Sphere of Safety is just busted. I mean, I, you know, just looking at these cards just makes me want to go play this deck. I mean, these are such awesome, powerful effects uh, to dirtle around until you can do what you want. And I just love warping the game with cards like this. Uh, Journey to Nowhere, Dark Steel Mutation, Oblivion Ring, you know, just some, some basic removal stuff. Uh, one cute thing you can do with Journey to Nowhere is you can use it as a blink effect by uh, exiling a creature that you want back and then 
destroying it with like Rex Age or one of these other like O-ring effects and then getting your creature back. I actually did that with Resolute Archangel to uh, stop myself from losing the other day. Uh, Stasis Snare is another new card and this is fantastic. In this deck, not only does it, you know, take care of their creature, but you could also um, trigger a blink effect with your Skybind, or you can use it to like save one of your creatures and then on your turn destroy it and get your creature back. I mean, it's just a fantastic card. It's really cool. Crop rotation for Glacial Chasm, something that I've always wanted to do. I've got enough extra lands in this deck, um, and I can also blink the Glacial Chasm with something else later, like the Flicker Wisp or the, the Skybind. So um, really fun, really great defensive cards in Selesnya colors, and uh, I just love this effect. You can also crop rotation for like Temple of the False God or Mystifying Maze to like surprise exile target attacking creature. Just a sweet card altogether. Uh, Constant Miss is another card that we can afford to run in this deck. We're ramping so hard and we're drawing so many cards that um, sacking a land to completely stall out the game is a really fantastic effect. Uh, you know, when you set up the defenses like this, one of the ways you lose is direct damage, and, and that's where Glacial Chasm is really powerful. It shuts down direct damage. Um, Vines of Vastwood is uh, just one of those little protection spells, great on defense to save uh, Silvala, and it's also nice because you can disrupt uh, something your opponent's trying to do uh, by targeting their own creature, like suiting it up with something. You got your Swiftfoot Boots for protection. Angelic Renewal is a really sweet card. If you guys have never uh, tried this out, um, it's especially good in ETB decks or decks where your uh, general's really expensive. So it's great because it's on curve, it's great in this deck because it's an enchantment, um, and it's really nice because it helps protect like Felidar Sovereign or something like that, and it re-triggers ETB effects. Then we've, uh, this is the only deck that I've ever run this card in, I think this card's bad, but this protects my combos, so like when I'm drawing my deck I can cast this really early uh, in, the, in the, you know, ramping and drawing my entire deck part of the combo to protect the rest of the combo later. Um, and again, you know, if my opponents have counter spells, I can recur these things. So really sweet. Also uh, notice it's an enchantment creature, so you can tutor for it. It's going to trigger your sigil. A lot of nice little synergies. So uh, other than Felidar Sovereign, how am I actually winning this game? So here's the bad combos. You've got Midnight Guard and Sunstrike Legionnaires. They both have this uh, clause that they untap when a creature enters play. So you slap this presence of Gond on them, and this will allow them to make a creature, which is then going to untap themselves, and you just make infinite creatures right then and there. Um, it's easy for me to tutor for the presence. It's a little harder for me to get uh, either of these guys, but it's nice because there's two of them. And then you can win without swinging by sacking all of those 1-1s to Altar of Dementia. Uh, Altar of Dementia is also one of the ways where when I draw my deck, I can cast this spell with my green mana that I'm making, cast some creatures, sack those creatures, mill my opponent so that they're going to deck before I deck when I'm doing my infinite parlay. Um, this is also just a really nice uh, thing to have to mill myself for when I'm about to hit some of these recursion spells I'll show you. Uh, so then we've got Guilty Conscience, which in a pinch you can put it on a threatening creature uh, so that they can only attack you with it once, but really it's in the deck for Stuffy Doll. So Stuffy Doll enters, you choose one player, I would normally name like the control player unless somebody's really threatening, uh, and then you put Guilty Conscience on it, and when Stuffy Doll deals the damage to itself, it triggers Guilty Conscience and you get an infinite loop where it deals infinite damage to that opponent. So normally this is a one-time use, but you've seen some of the ways that I can flicker creatures, uh, and I can actually do something like cast Flicker Wisps targeting Guilty Conscience, it leaves until end of turn, then I can Cloud Shift Stuffy Doll, it re-enters play, put Swift Foot Boots on it, pass the turn, this enters on the end step, and I re-tap it and kill the second player that I've named. So you can pull off some really stupid stuff with this deck, um, and these guys, uh, this guy's uh, kind of difficult to tutor for as well, but it's just one of those things where if you jam enough of this uh, garbage in a deck, you're going to run into it, especially when you're drawing as many cards as I am and making enough mana to, to pull it off. Uh, regrowth can um, resurrect my combo piece if I need to, or it's just a great like early way to like pull off another big six mana ramp spell and just really get going fast. Marshall's Anthem can bring back uh, all the ETB creatures. This card's super powerful in the late game. It can be 
just completely devastating when you bring back a Trastodon and a Hornet Queen and a Resolute Archangel. It's just like completely discouraging to your opponents. Um, and then you've got Open the Vaults to bring back all artifacts and enchantments. This will return your opponent's stuff, but generally in a deck like this, my stuff is going to be better than theirs. Um, and I'll have ways to sort of interact if I have to deal with something that they brought back. Um, and then finally, another reason that, you know, Altar of Dementia is good here is I can sack a whole bunch of stuff and then cast uh, Praetor's Council to get, you know, 30 or 40 cards back into my hand and just take over the game from that point. So... Um, I've got a little bit of mean stuff in here, you know, some people don't like infinite combos. For the most part though, this deck I think is pretty tame, but I found ways to uh, to grind out value, to stay really defensive, and you know, if nothing else, I'm going to have some fun uh, giving everybody cards and gaining a bunch of life and, you know, just be really threatening and almost winning the game. So that is my Silvala Blink Chantress Bad Combo deck. I hope you guys are enjoying this jank as much as I am. I love this format. Uh, if you want to check it out some more, click on the links below. We've got the full deck list, and there's also a Facebook group that I run that's got, uh, at this point, I think it's got about 250 people in it, and we've got more metagame information, official rules, and all that good stuff. So thanks for watching, you guys.